So many turret tutorials show you how to make a turret that only works if it's stationary, if it's parallel to the ground. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a turret that tracks its target in three dimensions, regardless of its orientation, if it's rotating as it's tracking, if it's moving as it's tracking. The turret itself will feature independent rotation as well as elevation of its guns, target tracking, customizable tracking speeds, and like I said, it works at any orientation if it's already moving, so you can slap it on the side of your ugly ass capital ship with no problem. The basic idea of the turret is three node 3Ds. The root node 3D is named turret and simply serves as a root for all other nodes. Child of that root node is a node named body. Now, I actually thought that was a node 3D. I made it a mesh instance 3D instead. It's not a big deal. Mesh instance 3D inherits from node 3D. So anyway, body, let's talk about it as if it were a node 3D body is going to rotate around its own y-axis. And then child of the body is the head, which is a node 3D, and it's only going to elevate or rotate around its x-axis. Now, anything added onto that is just for visuals. So the body itself is actually a mesh instance with a box. The cap is just a sphere mesh instance 3D, and the two barrels are just cylinder mesh instance 3Ds. If you download my code, link in the description, you will see that there's a scene named Turret and a scene named Turret Teacher. These are more or less the same. Turret Teacher simply has some extra meshes for debugging and some visualizations that are going to help me explain how I set this up. It's got this long pink cylinder mesh to see exactly where the turret is looking. There are two plane meshes and two colored spheres. The planes represent the planes of rotation and elevation, respectively. The spheres are the points on those planes that the target position is projected onto. That's going to help us determine what sort of rotation or elevation is needed. So here's the basic turret script. It extends node 3D. You basically just stick this turret script onto the root node of the turret. My code is based on code from these tutorials right here, but like I said, uh, my code extends it and you can do more with my turret. I'm gonna go through the rest of the code in detail momentarily, but first let me describe the math and then we're gonna briefly go over to that Stack Overflow webpage and look at the mathematical formula. Basically what I need to do is I need to project the target position onto each of these two planes and then just figure out in that plane what is the rotation I need to get closer to that projected point. In the video you're seeing here, the blue sphere is one of the projections. It's the one onto the horizontal plane, the horizontal plane of rotation, and the yellow sphere is onto that elevation plane. And you can think of a projection kind of like a shadow. If the sun were directly overhead, where would the shadow of our target be on the horizontal plane, the base plane that we're rotating around, or if the sun was directly to the side and it was shining directly on sort of this window plane, the uh, vertical plane, that's where the yellow sphere is. And the reason that we need these is because we just want to figure out the rotation on a flat surface, but we're doing it for two different flat surfaces that are at right angles to get separately the rotation and the elevation. So this is the Stack Exchange page. I mistakenly called it Stack Overflow a moment ago, but Stack Exchange page that helped me out with some of the mathematics. We've got a point in space represented by the vector A, and we want to project it onto a plane with a normal vector N. Now what we mean by a normal vector there is the plane is a flat surface, and we have a vector, an arrow, pointing perpendicular to that plane, either directly up out of the plane or directly down into the plane. And what we can calculate right here is what is the angle and length of a vertical vector coming straight out of that plane up to this point A. The calculation that we make is we dot product A with N, divide by n dot producted with itself. Now that gives us a scalar value, just a single number, and then we multiply that number by n. And then if we have that vector, we can subtract it off of the point A to get the component of A that is on the plane itself, or to say it another way, that is parallel to the plane. And again, the whole point of this is because we basically want to flatten out where our target is at onto a flat surface so that we can just worry about rotation in two dimensions. So similar to the tutorial that I based my code off of, I export some variables to control the turret, how fast it elevates, how fast it rotates, and also a minimum and maximum elevation that just makes the turret look a little bit more real so that the guns don't rotate through the bottom of the turret or up above 90 degrees, or in this case, 60 degrees is what I set it to. 
Now, down below, I thought this was a nice little just quality of life feature that that tutorial had. Uh, I convert from degrees to radians, so I keep variables in uh, radians that I actually use in the code. Then I have a reference to the body and the head nodes, the node 3Ds. The body is going to be the one that rotates around its y-axis. The head is going to rotate around its x-axis. There's also a target, uh, which just needs to extend node 3D. And then I also borrowed this from the tutorial I based this on, this active Boolean. So basically, we're just going to disable the turret if it doesn't have a head or a body or a target. So then in physics process, if the turret's not active, just return, don't do anything. Otherwise, call this function rotate and elevate, which takes two inputs. The first input is just a float. It's the delta time, how much time has elapsed. Second input is a vector three, the target's global position. Rotate and elevate is where all the important calculations take place with the exception of two helper functions called by rotate and elevate. The first thing we do in this function is we're going to get a variable that I called rotation targ, which is the position of our target when projected onto the plane of rotation. So we're going to call this function get projected. I'll talk through that in just a moment. It takes as input the current target minus the global position of the body because the plane that we're projecting onto is going to be positioned at the origin. So we need to maneuver our current target relative to that origin. Now later, we're going to add back in the body.global position. The second input is the vector that is the normal vector of the plane we're projecting onto. A normal vector is simply a vector perpendicular to the plane that can be used to sort of define the plane. Okay, so then we go down to get projected. This is where I'm going to do the calculation from the Stack Exchange webpage that I showed you a moment ago, the projection onto the plane. We're going to normalize the normal vector. It is not necessarily normalized beforehand, even despite the variable name. And then I'm going to get this projection variable, which is basically a vector going from the plane that we're projecting onto to the point above it that we're projecting down onto it. When we subtract that component off of our target's position, we get the projection down onto the plane. So going back up to the rotate and elevate function, we've got that projected point. Now it's projected onto a plane that passes through the origin. So we've got to add back in body.global position uh, to get the actual position in space that we want. Remember, we subtracted that off before we passed in the current target's position as input. And then we're going to get the angle to that projected point from the body's global position with respect to the direction the body is facing, body.globalbasis.z. Get angle to target is another function that I wrote, so I'm going to scroll down to that right now. There is a built-in angle to function in Godot, which I was originally using, but for some reason it sometimes didn't produce the correct output for me. It didn't produce the same output that my function did, and my function worked, so that's what I'm using. Now my get angle to is relatively simple. It does start off with a long comment describing some of the mathematics behind the code. It takes as input the seeker's position, that's the turret itself, the target's position, that's self-explanatory, and the facing direction of the turret. The code is simply based on the law of cosines. We are going to use the built-in direction to function to get the direction from the seeker, that's our turret, to the target. We're going to normalize that. We're also going to normalize the facing direction. We're just going to make them both length one. And then we take the arc cosine of the dot product of the two vectors. It's really just an application of the law of cosines. Scrolling back on up to rotate and elevate, now we've got this variable that I named y angle. It's the amount that we want to rotate around our y axis in order to face the target. That angle of rotation that we need is directionless, so we need to calculate whether it's to the left or to the right. So I use this rotation sign to do that. I find the current target position relative to the body using dot to local, and then I get the sign of the x component. I believe it was probably possible to use to local instead of the projection code that I used, but I kind of like showing the math in my code. It certainly would make it easier if anybody's trying to take this tutorial over to C Sharp or any other programming language. So the final amount of rotation that we're going to perform in this time step, which I named final underscore y, is going to be the rotation sign times whichever is smaller, the minimum of rotation speed times delta. That's the maximum amount that we can rotate in this time frame 
or the y angle. So if y angle is smaller than the maximum amount we want to rotate, we're just going to snap right to that position. But if it's larger, then we'll rotate as far as we're allowed to in this time frame. If you don't use this minimum, your turret may have this really ugly jitter where it's constantly overshooting its target ever so slightly uh, to the left, to the right, and back and forth, and we really don't want that. Finally, we take the body, we tell it to rotate around its y-axis by this final y amount. All right, rotation is complete. Now we do a very, very similar thing for the elevation, but we got to use different axes. So I'm going to get a variable named elevation targ, which is the target's position projected onto the plane about which we're elevating. So get projected current target minus the head's global position, because we're doing it with respect to a plane that goes through the origin uh, that has this normal vector. So this vector perpendicular to the plane head.globalbasis.x, so we're going to rotate around the x-axis this time, call that getProjected function, which is the very last function in the script. Then we're going to add back in the global position because we are relative to the head itself, the head of the turret. We're going to get the angle to the target from the head's global position to that projected point using the direction the head is facing, head.globalbasis.z. From there, we're going to get the elevation sign, whether we need to pitch up or pitch down, similar to before where we were rotating left or right. Now, there is an extra negative sign in front of this because pitching up is negative, which is not necessarily what you'd expect. So don't forget that negative sign there. That is a slight difference to the previous calculation. Finally, we calculate this final x, the amount of x rotation. It's the same as before. It's the sign times whichever is smaller, the elevation speed times the elapsed time, or the amount that we need to rotate to actually face our target. Then we ask the head to rotate around its x-axis this final x amount. Now another difference between the rotation and the elevation is that I'm going to limit the amount of elevation. I'm going to clamp between the minimum and the maximum. Now the negative of the maximum is the lower value because again pitching up is negative and down is positive. We could have also added a clamp like this for the horizontal rotation of the turret. If you want to limit how much it can rotate side to side, you could easily add that in. So everything that I just showed you is in turret.gd script. There's a little bit of extra code in turretteacher.gd, otherwise it's a direct copy. The little extra code is this projection indicator.global position setting. I am setting the position of those yellow and blue spheres so that I can just see where the projections are located. This was for testing, it's for you know my recording of this video and just teaching you a little bit extra. A third script, the turret controller, lets me control the turret with the arrow keys and again has a lot of duplicated code from what I've shown you. All it's trying to do though is just use that code to print out the angle to the target along the two axes of rotation. That was just added in so I could test out whether or not the turret could look where it needed to look and whether the angles made sense. That's it. That's all you need. For completeness, I'll now explain extras you'll find if you download the project. Spectator is a scene I created. It's just a character body with a camera attached for letting me move around and view the scene from different angles. You can control the camera with the WASD keys to move left, right, forward, backward. You can use shift and control to move up and down and use the mouse to rotate around. Turret Basic is the turret itself, the one without any of the teaching components, the planes and the projection indicators. Turret Teacher has those planes and projection indicators. Everything else, every other scene begins with Turret Test, and they are just different test scenarios that I ran. Either just very basic ones to get a proof of concept, or the Turret Teacher ones where I wanted to show off some aspect of the turret. There's also Rocky Ground, which was sort of my stress test of my turret. We have the turret on a platform that rotates along two different axes and moves back and forth along the Z axis. And the turret is still going to do a good job tracking its moving target. Here, I'm going to move the camera slightly. The target is moving even as the turret is on a moving platform. So now you can see how you could use this in some kind of like spaceship shooter where spaceships are flying all, of which, all around and twisting through space and the turrets are still going to try and track their targets. And you can see the board is rotating along two different axes as well as moving along its z-axis just back and forth. It's got three timers that are just changing when it starts moving up or down or rotating left or rotating right. The script that I'm using is wobble.gd and it just has some basic uh, movement stuff that I'm not really going to go through. It's just changing rotations and positions. But that was to really stress test my turret and make sure 
Can it try and track a moving target, that purple uh, streak there at the in the distance, can it track that moving target while itself is on a moving and rotating platform? And it does it its best. Sometimes it loses the target a little bit, but that's because it's got a limited rotation speed and a maximum elevation and a minimum elevation. So sometimes that pink line moves off center, but then it will try and get right back as soon as it can. This will also work nicely with the previous video I made about leading a target. You can just feed in the result from the target lead code, which is a position in space, it's a vector 3D, ahead of some moving target. You just give that to the turret as the position that it needs to rotate towards, and you have a turret that will lead its target. Turret test four is just demonstrating that you can swap targets very easily. It's also first person perspective, although that's not important. So we've got two targets up in the sky and I just hit enter and it will switch to the tracking the other target. Hit enter again, and it'll go back to tracking that first target. And that's just changing a variable. Like there was no reason I expected that to not work. I was just trying to be thorough. Turret test five controller allows me to control the turret with the arrow keys on my keyboard, not WASD, but the arrow keys. And so I can look at those degrees uh, in the lower left corner to see, is that is that accurate? We also have turret test six, six. I didn't actually mean to leave this in. Um, it's just an off-center controlled turret. So again, I'm using the left and right arrow keys to uh, move this beam here. I don't know why I'm even not using the pink beam anymore. I think I reset this up very, very late in the process. And I meant to delete it because it doesn't add anything that the others don't. The target is currently off the screen. It's, it's, you can't just see it up there. So this is not a very good test. There it comes back into view right there. We can try and track it. It's just an off-center camera to get another angle on tracking this uh, object. The targets themselves are also scenes. No, they're not. The targets themselves, uh, I just duplicated them in each of the test scenes. So it's literally just a node 3D with a mesh instance and a GPU particles, just because I thought it was fun to see, like you could see the direction of movement if it trails some particles. And the script for target and target two are very similar. They are simply named by the way, target GD and target 2.GD. And they just have some exported parameters that we can uh, control if we want. Uh, the radius uh, at which they rotate around the turret, their orbital speed, their vertical speed, because they this one has like a sine wave where it moves up and down, and then the height limit for that sine wave. And it just moves, you know, global position values, right? So nothing too fancy. Uses some cosine and sine waves to get uh, a wavy circle with which it moves around the turret to test it out. All this code is available on GitHub, link in the video description. The organization is into two folders. There's a scripts folder for the scripts and a scenes folder for the scenes. Godot and good luck.